Hello, my darlings. I'm Mrs. Whatever You Are. And I'm Mary Lynn Simpleton, and we'd like to be the very first to welcome you to San Francisco. You know, this is the third time that San Francisco has hosted gay and lesbian square dancers from all over the world. 30 years has gone by so fast, and you know some square dancers have been to every single convention. Square dancers from all over the Bay Area and some of your favorite callers would like to share with you some favorite square dance convention memories. Take a look. My first convention was the very first one, 1984 in Seattle. And I particularly remember having the opportunity to dance for the first time with national level callers, Paul Markham and Elmer Sheffield, who were the only national level straight callers willing to consider calling for a gay group. And they found it enormously enjoyable and we greatly appreciated it, especially having the chance to dance to them doing live Honky Tonk Queen. We danced to their recording of it a lot. It had almost become the gay anthem of the square dance clubs, but actually having them do it for us live, the energy that passed between them and us, it was just enormously affirming and exciting, and I felt that gay square dancing had finally been acknowledged and we had arrived. Late night, Friday night, we were so amped up from the first full night of dancing with national level callers that we wanted to keep going. Various club callers stepped in, and eventually Paul Markham and Elmer Sheffield, our callers, came back down. And people kept coming down when they heard um, from roommates coming up that there was still square dance going on. And finally, about 1.30 or 2, Ruby from Seattle came down making a grand entrance in a lace frilly nightgown with a crinoline underneath still impeccably quaffed as Ruby always was and she was just a wonderful sight that I will never forget. My first convention was Shakedown 2010 in Chicago. Mine was in 2004 in Phoenix, Arizona. 1997 in Las Vegas. Vancouver, the uh, Baltimore convention in, in 2000 and Crack the Crab. My first convention was in 2006. It was in Denver and I had this crazy idea that I was going to have the Badge Works people make me a convention virgin badge. And I met so many people. People wanted to talk with me, people wanted to dance with me, simply because it was my first convention. So if it's your first convention, I highly suggest that you get them to make you a custom convention virgin badge as well. At Anchors Away, in San Diego. I finally got up the nerve to enter the Honky Tonk Queen contest. Brian Smith from Vancouver came and told me later that he had been a little bit late and so he came into the back and he looked up on the stage and his first reaction was, oh my god, that's Paul up there. Then he looked at the other contestants and his second reaction was, oh my god, he's going to win. And I did. My favorite convention was the Chicago convention, uh, the first Chicago convention, Track to Chicago. Uh, it was at the Hyatt Hotel, I remember, and uh, it was also at the same time of the International Mr. Leather Contest. And I just remember it being really sexy and really fun having the, all the guys from IML staying at our hotel. And I particularly remember a time that the Honky Tonk Queens were coming down the escalator in one direction, and the IML uh, uh, Contestants were going up in the other directions with their um, cheekbones uh, showing. My first convention was in Vancouver in 2001. My very first night there at the Trailland Dance. I met a very good looking young man from one of the local clubs, dragged him up to my room, and uh, the two of us were going at it when my roommate showed up. The roommate was absolutely mortified to see the two of us there, and uh, beat a retreat to parts unknown. Uh, the guy from Vancouver, you know, he and I were through in about 10 minutes, and I spent the rest of the evening looking up and down, high and low, to try to find my roommate. He showed up about 2 o'clock in the morning. The poor dear had been hiding out in the hot tub, waiting for us to get finished. And I'm sure he overestimated my staying power, because like I said, we were done in 10 minutes. My very first convention was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and 
I was straight then at the time. Anyway, probably one of the funniest things at a convention that's happened was a packed plus floor. And somebody had been in plotting against me, probably my sister. I don't know for sure, but anyway, the first thing I called was pass out. Everybody in the floor did hit the deck. It was about 40 squares lying on the floor. So I think that was one of the most alarming things that happened to me. My favorite convention memory was in Los Angeles, and I was on a fun badge tour. And uh, we stopped, blocked the streets uh, uh, in front of Groman's Chine Chinese Theater. And about five busloads of gay square dancers ca got out of the buses and uh, I guess um, whooped and hollered and uh, provided a lot of entertainment to the tourists who were trying to put their, uh, their feet in the footsteps of John Wayne on the pavement. One of my favorite Fun Badge tour stops uh, that I remember vividly is from uh, Baltimore. We square danced on the turntable of the B&O Railroad in Baltimore. Who knew the B&O Railroad was not just a Monopoly board card? When I went to Vancouver last year, I went on the Fun Badge tour. And on the Fun Badge tour, they gave out tickets and places on each bus for you to sit. And when I went in to get my seat, I stopped and talked to all the friends I had and it took me a very long time to get back to sit with my friend. When I got back there, my seat was taken. So I didn't have a place to sit. So there were very many gay men who offered their laps for me. And so I rode that section of the tour on a lap. When we got off the bus, I went to my steward and suggested maybe I get up put on a different bus. Well, they found me a seat to sit on on that bus and lo and behold, when I loaded that bus and said hello to all my friends along the way to find my seat, it was taken and I had to sit on more laps. So at that point, I stopped looking for new seats and started looking for more laps. And I spent the whole tour sitting on different men's laps and having a delightful time meeting all sorts of new friends. At the Atlanta convention, which was two years ago, uh, I was dancing in the advanced hall and when we started dancing there was a woman who I didn't know that wasn't doing very well. She didn't seem to be able to get any advance calls correctly and then at the end of the first tip she said, is this the mainstream hall? My first convention was the lights, camera, linear action convention. The Miami convention. In 1993 in Seattle. The Vancouver convention, the first one. In Los Angeles. Las Vegas in 1997. My first convention was San Francisco in 1996. And it was called Stars, Dars, and Cable Cars. And the convention was much larger than the hotel could handle. The only place for the mainstream hall was going to be this long, narrow vestibule outside the Grand Ballroom. So that's where they put the mainstream dancing. And so we were dancing there, and Mike was doing Pass Through Move On, which is a lot of lines and ordered rows, and it's, it's, very, it's a lot of fun to watch. So we're doing Pass Through Move On, and suddenly somebody shouted, and we looked out the window to the street, and there were like literally four rows of people watching through the windows and talking and pointing and clapping. And we all had to stop for a second, waved back, and then went back to what we were doing. I think my favorite Square Dance convention moment was in 2003 at the San Diego convention where I was invited to be one of the callers. And being pretty new, I was depending on friends of mine to be my pilot square. And they thought it would be funny if they would switch genders every time they got home. So it was really messing me up. And it's like, oh God, come on guys, be my friends. But it was still very funny. And as horrifying as it was, I still think it was one of my favorite conventions. And I think my favorite convention would be Santa Clara 2005. Uh, it was the convention where we first met. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually met before convention started. You were coming out of Calder School, of course. It actually took us about six months before we managed to get the first real date in. But uh, once we did, we've been together ever since. My story is about uh, a convention after I had moved from Atlanta back to California. I ran into a bunch of the guys from Atlanta outside of one of the dance halls up and we formed a square toward the back corner and uh, began to dance and it got quite rowdy. I was dancing the girl part with Vinnie Metzger 
And as we got to the end of the tip, the caller used that familiar patter phrase, swing your partner upside down. And as we turned the last corner and headed home, I felt Benny's hand reach down to my side. He flipped me upside down, and the last swing was with me completely upside down. And uh, I collapsed on the floor in laughter, and we laughed so hard we could hardly thank each other. But when people ask me why I square dance, I always think back to that tip. As a caller, I really appreciate the, uh, the caller school that they have before every convention. One of the really uh, think, cool things that I remember about that particular first, first time was after a hard days of work learning our basics and calling, we need, wanted to practice some more on our own. And we looked around the hotel, where can we go that's kind of out of the way and has good acoustics to try square dancing? We came up with the idea of a tinkle tip in the men's restroom. Uh, we had a full square in there, called to it, danced around, and as we promenaded around, the automated urinals flushed every time we went around. Probably the funniest thing that ever happened to me is a caller thing. Uh, callers are always in demand from people, and so we um, have a hard time getting away from dancers even to go to the bathroom in cases. So Anne and I had been on the stage calling together and both of us, as we're finishing, she looks at me and I looked at her and she said, I gotta go to the bathroom. I said, me too. So we go off to the bathroom, but while we're going, dancers are following us and asking us questions. So we managed to get into the bathroom and I'm in the stall and someone looks down and sees my shoes and says, Sandy, is that you? And I said, yes. And she says, what was that thing you called a few minutes ago? <laughs> So my first convention again was 1984 in Seattle. North Star Promenade in Vancouver. Vancouver, Canada, 1990. In Portland, I think it was called Weave the Rose. The second Seattle convention, which was Remake the Circle. Our first square dance convention was in Denver in 2007, Red Rocks and Purple Mountains. And for me, the amazing thing was is that I found myself in a hotel that was filled with almost 100% GLBT people. and. There was a huge number of people, and they were all square dancers. And it was just a fabulous experience to be with that many people. That was the first time for you, for both of us, to, mm -hmm. to be in a large group of, of gay people like that. And the hotel staff was, was very supportive. Um, they applauded us when we did the, the grand parade. And um, it was just a very celebratory week. My favorite story from the convention is my first convention. And it was, um, my friends all told me that I have to do the moonshine tip, do the moonshine tip, do the moonshine tip. And I was like, great, you get drunk and you dance, and that sounds really fun. So I went in the room for the moonshine tip, and they closed all the doors, and everyone started taking their clothes off. And I was like, huh? And then it turns out the moonshine tip is not getting drunk, it's getting naked. So everyone, and once they close the doors, they don't let you out. So everyone got naked, including the caller. And we danced naked, and it was one of the most freeing experiences that I've had, and it was really fun. Although I don't think I'm going to do it again. The moonshine tip at the Albuquerque convention was booked in too small a hall. There was, a, uh, there was about four times the number of people they were expecting for that tip, and so uh, everyone had already uh, taken off their clothes, and they were dancing. They did uh, maybe one, one, one tip. And then uh, it was decided that uh, they would uh, try to move to another hall. And the problem with that was that everyone had no clothes on. So how do you get between one hall and the other? Apparently, someone arranged for a lot of, uh, a lot of the dancers who were not dancing the moonshine tip to come out and line the hallways between the hall that they, had, that they had started in and then the hall that they were going to go to, which was much larger. So um, all of these people picked up their clothes and carried them with them without getting dressed, and they walked through the halls of the hotel uh, into the newer hall. And, uh, and then after it was over, I guess uh, everyone was applauding as, uh, as, as, the, as the naked people were walking through there. But it was quite, uh, quite funny. So our favorite convention story happened in uh, 2011. Um, in May of 2011, my partner of many years passed away. And um, she and I had started square dancing together. And I ended up thinking I would never square dance again. I couldn't imagine square dancing without her. And so I've pretty much decided 
um, that was going to be it for me. No more square dancing. The, her friends would not put up with this, and on behalf of Liz, her partner, she wouldn't have either. So uh, I was going, I said, I have a room, and uh, you're going to come, and you're going to dance in Atlanta. So apparently, we got registered at this hotel as Mr. and Mrs. McCabe. And um, I started getting phone calls, hello, Mrs. McCabe, could we send up the champagne for you? And at first I kind of sputtered, what do you mean Mrs. McCabe? And then I, I kind of was having fun with it. And we started being Mr. and Mrs. McCabe for the next couple of years. Yeah. And then years later at a dance in Sebastopol, we were having a spat on the dance floor and from different squares, I well, shouted over to well, Karen. Well, first of all, the reason we started having this problem in the marriage was that it was never consummated. <laughs> so I yelled over, I'm going to divorce you. And, and I yelled back, I'm going to divorce you. I happened to be dancing with this straight guy who was a lawyer. And he leans over to me and he says, take him for everything he's worth. <laughs> That's it. My first convention was 2006 uh, in Anaheim. I think my, my perception of Anaheim was Disneyland. Yes, we were next to Disneyland, but the f dance floor was like Disneyland. I danced every tip um, and came away with sore, pleasantly sore feet. There you have it, kiddies. 30 years of memories in a hot flash. So go on out there and make some more unforgettable square dance convention memories. But before you do, we have one more special friend who would also like to say hello. Uh, you're a lieutenant governor here in California. You're former mayor of the great city and county of San Francisco. I always say, when we say great city, I try to do it with that sort of mayoral voice, the great city and county of San Francisco. A city, by the way, best described uh, as 49 square miles surrounded by reality. It is a wacky and wonderful place, and I say that in the best sense of both words. Uh, a city that has long prided itself uh, on not just tolerating its diversity, but celebrating its diversity. It's a city that celebrates all of its interesting differences, but at the end of the day, at our best, we unite around our common humanity, uh, the web of mutuality that Dr. King talks so evocatively and eloquently about. This notion of empathy, notion of mutuality, I think is part of the DNA of what makes uh, San Francisco, and frankly, for that matter, in my role now as Lieutenant Governor of California, this state and our nation uh, so special and unique. Uh, I'm here also to welcome you to a city of dreamers, of doers and entrepreneurs, a city that has long prided itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas, just as you've been leading uh, on the cutting edge of dance over three remarkable decades. Uh, which is pretty impressive. I think I was, well, I won't tell you how old I was exactly, um, but when you started, but uh, I will say that uh, dancing's my life. And it's probably obvious to all of you uh, that uh, I'm a big dancer, at least um, theoretically, uh, when in fact you'll never see me on the dance floor. If you do, it was an imposter. So I long windedly just want to thank you for your talents because God knows I don't share your talent. Uh, I wish I did. In fact, I'd be a better husband if I did. My wife is a, a big dancer, but this is really dull and not that interesting to you. So let me conclude. Thank you for your expression. Uh, thank you for your extraordinary contribution uh, to uh, making the fabric of our life so much more interesting and so much more important and valuable. Happy 30th anniversary. Have a great few days out here. Welcome to San Francisco. Have a fabulous, fabulous time. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome, welcome to San Francisco. Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. And welcome to San Francisco. Welcome, welcome to, to Weave Your Heart, heart in San Francisco. Francisco. I'd like to welcome you to San Francisco and Weave Your Heart. Welcome to Weave Your Heart in San Francisco. Welcome, welcome to, to San, San Francisco. Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome all of you to Weave Your Heart. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to Weave Your Heart in San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco and Weave Your Heart. Oh shit, I forgot the welcome part, sorry. Mm -hmm.